Christy, thank you. The search for answers as dozens of homeowners pick up the pieces after a deadly explosion rocks northwest Baltimore. And word now, a second person was killed in the blast. And WJZ continues to bring you team coverage. We begin with Amy Kawada with the investigation and what we're learning about the two people killed. Two people lost their life. Just a few blocks away from the pile of devastation is a reminder. Quarter flags and some stuffed animals. Of the two lives lost in an instant. I just felt though that we should acknowledge them. Morgan State University confirmed one of their students, 20 year old Joseph Graham, was killed in Monday's gas explosion along Labyrinth Road. He was a rising sophomore pursuing an electrical engineering degree. Officials say his body was pulled from the rubble early Tuesday morning. One woman told WJZ a man kept returning to the scene all day Monday, waiting for them to find his nephew. And I told him, I said, oh my God, I'm praying for you. The news of now two confirmed deaths sent shockwaves through the neighborhood. One neighbor says the other victim, a woman, was pregnant. I always see her because my daughter and I, we take walks through the neighborhood. I just can't even put it into words because I know like the first thing I thought of was my kids. BGE crews were back on the scene Tuesday. The company says no leaks were found when they inspected the gas main and service pipes, and they found no issues on their side of the equipment. As of right now, it appears that the issue is on the customer side of the meter. That data is being analyzed right now. Tuesday, members of a local church offered support, saying they want to help cover funeral costs. When you have this type of tragedy, that's like the last thing you want to think about. And BGE says it's now beginning to restore service to the homes here along Labyrinth Road that had their service temporarily suspended. And tonight at 7, the Empowerment Temple Church will be holding a prayer service at the Applebee's parking lot in the Ricerstown Plaza. Live this morning, I'm Amy Kawada for WJZ. Amy, thank you. As the investigation into what happened continues, we're getting a different perspective thanks to some of the first people who ran to the scene Monday morning. They hit record on their phones and shared the videos with us. Each one captures how dramatic and chaotic the scene was just moments after the blast. Neighbors say it looked like a war zone or something out of a movie. Many ran toward the rubble and the sound of voices screaming for help. And I screamed over to the firefighters, hey, he's over there, go get him. We saw the guy lift his hand up out of the rubble. So that's when the firefighters draw their attention on him. All you really can see was his eyes, no, no eyelashes, no eyebrows. His ankle was just hanging, hanging, you know. I was actually surprised the guy was still alive, you know, but you know, like you say, he was looking at us, but nothing, nothing was there. All his skin was gone. Uh, in all, seven people were pulled from the rubble. Five are in critical condition. Many of the people we spoke to yesterday say they had a hard time falling asleep last night. How can you blame them? Just remembering the sound of that blast and being traumatized from all they saw Monday morning. So many homes were damaged in the blast. For many, the cleanup and repair process is just getting started. Rachel Minotaur spoke to people who have damage but are thankful to be alive. I want to say an estimate about 12 to 13 houses down. Down the street, about a block away from Taikisha Teal's home, is where emergency operation crews are continuing their recovery effort at the scene of the explosion. I felt like my neighbor's house shaking, so I felt the house lift up and just like shake, like almost similar to an earthquake, but not as quite. Teal's front home was shattered. She says her home and others are also structurally damaged given the cracks in the walls and ceiling. The explosion was so powerful, it impacted homes within a five block radius. The damage forced 30 people to seek temporary shelter overnight and over 200 people are affected, including Lisa McKenzie. Basin windows blew in, there's glass everywhere. McKenzie credits her fellow neighbors, her church and her landlords for springing into action. They had their insurance company come and assess us, assess the house. They sent somebody back to clean up. While city crews helped residents board up damaged windows, the American Red Cross went door to door with supplies. Mackenzie says it was also a powerful display of the community coming together. It's so good to see people helping people because not expecting something in return. And police continue to block off the entrance to Labyrinth Road as they conduct their own investigation. So right now, at least from the ground, we are not able to see the damage to the homes on the other side of us, those homes closer to the site of the explosion. I'm Rachel Menatoff reporting in Northwest Baltimore for WJZ.